Good morning, everyone, and warmest welcomes to Trinity Episcopal Church on Galveston Island. I'm the Reverend Jimmy Abbott, and I'm so glad that you have joined us for our special online worship service for Sunday, June 19th, 2022. If this is your first time worshiping with us, please visit trinitygalv.org. While you're there, you can learn more about our church, you can sign up for our e-newsletter, you can make a financial gift, and you can reach out to us in the church office so that we can connect with you and get to know you, our online congregation, more and more. Please know that our in-person worship services of Holy Communion do continue every Sunday at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Our 8 a.m. service is a simple spoken service of Holy Communion, and our 10.30 service has music and choir and organ and children's programs as well. Please know that you are always welcome to join us and worship with us here at Historic Trinity Church. If you would like to receive Holy Communion where you are in your home, please by all means reach out to us in the church office and I would love to schedule that with you to come to where you are to pray with you, to walk with Jesus with you, and to share in that sacred meal so that our hearts may grow closer to God and to one another. Our special online service today continues with a reading from the Gospel according to Luke. Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is off opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now, there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these, so he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the step, down the steep bank into the lake, and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country, the Gerasenes, asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. Here ends the lesson. Now, today is Juneteenth, June 19th, and that is a big day for us here in Galveston. I know that Juneteenth is now a, a federal holiday, which is wonderful, but it really all started here in Galveston, just to refresh your memory. At the end of the Civil War, Galveston was the last port that remained in the Confederacy. On June 19, 1865, General Granger of the Union Army and a contingent of soldiers arrived here in Galveston, and General Granger began ordering a, uh, uh, issuing a number of orders. General Order Number 3 is what we mostly remember, and in that order, General Granger ordered that all people held as slaves would be freed 
and were told to remain where they were and to now work for wages. So rightly so, this has become a massive celebration, and we look forward here at Trinity and at Galveston to celebrate Juneteenth. Of course, as I read this lesson from the Gospel of Luke, I can't help but notice some of the the, the similarities or maybe some resonances going on between Juneteenth and the story. So let's walk through the story. First of all, Jesus goes to the other side of the lake. He is leaving a predominantly Jewish area and going to a predominantly Gentile area. This is a non-Jewish place. This is a foreign territory. And he comes across a man who is living in the tomb. So not only is he dead to society, chained, locked up, kept away in the tombs, but there is a sense of uncleanness going on here that he is living out in the graves. Now notice that the demons who are possessing this man know who Jesus is. They call him son of the most high God. It's very interesting to me that all throughout the Gospels, The demons know who Jesus is, and the angels know who Jesus is, but people are the battleground. And that we see this in the disciples and in all the characters, that they are all on the spectrum of either knowing or not knowing who Jesus is, whereas the angels and the demons definitely know who Jesus is. And we see that here when the demons say that Jesus is the Son of the Most High God. So Jesus casts out the demons into that herd of swine. Remember, swine are unclean pigs, right? And so then they rush down that steep bank and are drowned in the lake. Then the man, of course, is liberated from these demons and is in his right mind. And it says that the people, the people of that community, of that neighborhood, are afraid. Like, who is this Jesus? What can he do? How has this man changed so much? And so they ask Jesus to leave the neighborhood. What a line that is. Now think about this. This man has been healed. He's been liberated. And that is what upsets the community. It turns things on their head. They all knew how to relate to this man who was unclean when he was possessed. But now they don't know what to make of him. So they asked Jesus to leave. I think they're upset that Jesus would continue to upset the social order. Again, I I can't help but in my mind think about that first Juneteenth, General Granger and his order number three. General order number three said that enslaved people, of course, were now free, but they were supposed to stay where they were and work for wages. Think of the 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 relational dynamics that must have been going on and how those changed dramatically and how that would have caused an upheaval in all of those communities. Formerly enslaved people had never received compensation before. So there were questions about earning and gaining money and what that meant. And there were questions about how they would receive that money. And then those folks who used to enslave other people had to figure out labor negotiations and costs. They had to add something new to their budgets. This is the upheaval that we see in the story today. Someone is liberated, someone is freed, and it causes the whole system to get turned inside out and upside down. Again, I think those are all good things, of course. But it does ask us, as humans, how we relate to each other. And it causes us, forces us, liberation forces us to relate to people in new and hopefully healthier, holy ways. So fast forward, this happens today, too. Say people are liberated, liberated, say, from addictions. In their community, their families sometimes have a hard time relating to those people in their new ways. They were accustomed to the old behaviors, the old practices, the old person. And now that this person has become new, there are sometimes uh, some challenges, some upheaval going on in living with that person who is now freed in a new way. 
And so, of course, there are a number of takeaways from this, and one of them is that when people in our relational networks change, we need to give them the grace to change, to see and experience them in new ways as the Holy Spirit can indeed change hearts and minds. So when you have someone in your family who changes, your relationship with them, with them is going to have to change. And I encourage you to, to go with the Holy Spirit on that, to, to walk with them in that new way to not try to force them back into the old ways, but to accept them for now who they are. That can be really hard stuff. And, and sometimes, like we see in this, this community in the Gospel of Luke, you, you want to go back to the old ways, but you can't. You've got to move on, and you've got to accept these people now for who they are and to give thanks to God that they are new people. And that also, of course, that, that is flipped on its head. When you have been freed and when you've been liberated, you now have to go out and do what this man does. And that is go out and share the good news. Share who it was that saved you. To be unafraid, unabashed, to share that you have been liberated, freed, sanctified by our Lord Jesus. And again, that, that reminds me of the Juneteenth story. Now, I know that there's a sort of modern myth that General Granger stood on the steps of Ashton Villa, one of the big houses here, and read General Order Number 3, and then that set off this whole thing. Probably didn't actually happen that way. It was probably that he just wrote it down. Actually, it was one of his lieutenants wrote it down in the order book, and then there were handbills printed, and the order would have been printed in newspapers. And slowly, over the course of time, throughout the whole state of Texas, the news of emancipation spread. Isn't that a wonderful image? Again, the image of this man who had been liberated and freed, and that story then spreading slowly, slowly, ever expanding, so that everyone would know that those who had been enslaved were now free. So you, who have heard the good news of Jesus Christ, who have been liberated and freed from your sins, are now compelled to go out and share that and to live that good news. And when others are living that good news with you, to, to be able to adapt and change and accept them for who they are and to give thanks to God together for that new life that you have been given. So I hope all of you have a wonderful, blessed Juneteenth as we give thanks to God for all that God has done for us in our lives, in the work of liberation. And I hope that you all celebrate Juneteenth with all of the festivities that are going on here in the city of Galveston and indeed across the country as well. As we move into our time of prayer, I now ask you if you have any special prayer requests to put them in the comment section in the chat box, or if you have any prayers, concerns that you would like to speak with a member of the clergy about, to please, of course, reach out to the church office so that we can pray with you and walk with you during whatever is going on in your lives. And now we pray in the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we offer this prayer, our collect for the day. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Again, thank you all so much for joining us for our special online worship service. And of course, we would love to see you in person here at Trinity Church as we worship in this historic place, giving thanks to God for all that God has done in our lives, that work 
of freedom and liberation and redemption. And now for a final blessing. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.